Hello everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello. Ah, no, some brownie reviewer, Silver Quill. Have you ever wondered where the green goo of Chrysalis' lair comes from? You know. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Dead munchkins or something like that. <laughs> oh, we have a very good start already. <laughs> ah, let me suckle your love. Anyway, uh, we're going to be, of course, reviewing the fifth and last of the Finship is Magic comics. The one focused on Queen Chrysalis. Written by Katie Cook with art by Andy Price and colors by Heather Breckel. Now, this story takes place more or less after the events of the return of Queen Chrysalis. Those are the issues one to four of the main series of the IDW comics. And they, uh, it focuses on the main six going to visit Queen Chrysalis to make sure that her imprisonment is going as planned. What they find is a frail looking pe- uh, changeling queen who is so weak she has no strength left but to talk about her previous, uh, Victories, Foils, and Stories, which is going to be a series of parodies on events uh, of pop culture, culture, and history. So, guys, what would you think of this comic? I mean, this is the first comic with Katie and Andy after the main series fiascos that were the Good, the Bad, and the Ponies and the, um, uh, the, the Root of the Problem arcs. So what would you make of this one? Uh, I love this story, but so much of that is dependent on what you want from Chrysalis. I described this. With the Sombra comic, it was a character who I thought was fleshed out, and we learned his history, we learned some of the reasons behind his actions, which garnished some sympathy, even though there's no question what he did was wrong. Here, Chrysalis does not enjoy any sort of de- sympathetic development. She is probably the most evil villain of this entire series. Dare I say she's the most malevolent and evil of the entire show. Even obeying the sirens? Even obliterating the sirens? How could you top the villainy of the sirens and their ability to destroy all hope and interest? So, so here's an episode, here's a comic that shows her at her best. And who better to draw and write this than the folks who, the pair who made her so interesting in the first place? I mean, God, Chris was in a Candlelight Wedding. Everyone loved her because she looked cool, but she was yes. still just sort of a, a muahaha villain. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until the return of Queen Chrysalis where this is a woman who dashes cat brains against the wall. You. That used to be the darkest thing in this, in these comics. <laughs> until Queen Sombra happened. <laughs> yeah, point to point to Sombra, I guess. Uh, so, from start to finish, I love just how this, both Chrysalis and the story, just revel in what she's done, the horrors she's visited. And the artwork is sufficiently creepy to reinforce this in all respects. There, That's not to say it's flawless. I will bring up some criticisms. But this is my second favorite of the uh, Fiendship is Magic series, and it's just... A fun and engaging and dark tale from start to finish. I was afraid coming into this one because of Andy Price and Katie Cook's track record with two yeah. down, back at, back to back. So I, I was a bit nervous going into this one. And starting out with those two started good and then suddenly petering out to, oh my God, what have I read? And this one is totally different. Start out good, middle was good, end was good. It was a perfect ride. It has its up and downs. And when we reach the negative points, we'll point it out. But I highly enjoyed this one. And I almost feel sympathy for Chrysalis until that twist. <sighs> that twist. Getting your end my Shyamalan on. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, put away... Put away your share and go. Yeah, please, Norman. Okay. Be, 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 a bit, be a bit more polite. Um, have you guys watched Hook? The Robin Part- Williams, oh, uh, yeah. the Robin Williams, uh, uh, Steven Spielberg take on, uh, Peter Pan. Man. Love it. Yeah. There is one scene in that movie where all the lost children, they, they basically don't believe that Robin Williams is Peter Pan. So they, they, they leave him aside, except for one lost children where, 
who stays and like looks at Robin Williams's face and he holds uh, his cheeks and like makes him smile and he goes, "Oh, there you are, Peter. That's me with this comic. I'm holding it in front of my face as I am, and as I'm reading it, I go, "Ah, oh, there you are, Katie." There you are, Andy. I can recognize your writing and your art style. This is so cool. I missed you so much. Okay, don't cry now. Don't cry now. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. It, it, it is. It is such a wonderful return to form after four god awful comics where there was nothing but jerking you around and nothing but you wasting time. This comic is joyous. I mean, I'm not saying it's flawless. It does have a few flaws here and there, and I think I'm going to agree with you guys when it comes to the climax. But <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Perhaps, perhaps we're being biased against the other comics because the others were so bad that even the slightest better comic is just amazing. <laughs> That is true. That is true. Yeah, you know, like those movies between the 1996 and 2001, how every summer movie, if it, if it was average, it was unbelievable. <laughs> so I think that's what happens with this comic. <laughs> we come off after four horrible issues, and this one is great. <sighs> so yeah, I really like it. Not as much as I like Sombra, but I really like it. Mm -hmm. Yes. In, if we encapsulate the whole Finship is Magic... I would say, yeah, this is one. This is up there. This is in the top three. Uh, All right. So, how about we dive into it and see with the spoiler testic spoiling? Yes, indeed. Okay, okay. Let's do this. So, like I said in the, uh, oh, okay. By the way, spoilerific from the very beginning. No, seriously, stop listening to this right now, and then go buy the comic, read it, and then come back because we're going to spoil this. And it's funny. It does have spoilers, kind of from the very beginning. Hmm. Uh, especially when you think about it, considering the ending. But here we go. Let's do this. Hope you're ready. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Mm -hmm. So we start with the main six visiting what could be considered the um, the prison where the changelings have been left in, which is the castle from the uh, the very end of the Return of Queen Chrysalis arc, right? I'm assuming so because they were trapped inside that labyrinth. So I'm I'm guessing, yeah. Yeah, it is. It it might be the exact same. And Twilight and her friends go check on her to make sure that the banishment for a thousand years. By the way, they make it clear that it's going to take a thousand years. <laughs> uh, is going accordingly, uh... and that it's all going according to plan. Uh, yes, that's Kikaku. <laughs> so they get in, and it's funny that uh, costume is still going. La, la, la. This is the song that never ends. And it's per obviously driven Chrysalis uh, to madness. And when she begs the main six to please take it away, as soon as they start berating on her, they immediately back off. And this is so, this is so nasty. It, it's not, this, this is nasty right away. In the sense of they present Queen Chrysalis as a starving, almost kind of dying character. I mean, in that last panel of page two, of page four, they don't show much of her, but you can actually see the reef cage under her skin. This is, this is some, something messed up. Mm -hmm. Fade in a way. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. I, I, need, I need to bring this up because if I don't, someone else will. Chrysalis is a bug, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah, she, we could be the, considered that she's a bug, yeah. So in the ex, so she's purely made of exoskeleton, right? So, um, I, I can, I know what they're doing here, but the whole point here is kind of mute if you think Chrysalis is a bug kind of deal. So, yeah. So you're saying that idea really bugs you? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Yo, you. Ah, uh, this is such a bugger. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you're glad that you brought that up. Uh. <laughs> yep, I am. I am because if I didn't, someone else will. Oh dear. Well, she, we'll learn later that she's part bug, part pony, part X, <laughs> part something else. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. But she, but she's no, but all this. 
I, I do like to see how Twilight took everything into account, including a diet for her to still, uh, to keep herself sustained. So I'm wondering, what kind of diet will you submit a changeling to? <laughs> Valentine cards? Probably. Oof. Chocolate? Well, Brand flakes. Who knows? But no, but this this is something that I actually really like. Um, because I'm 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 a, I'm a sadist at heart. Mm-hmm. heart. Uh, uh, I'm, yeah, I really am. I'm a sadist I'll... at heart, and I love to see these characters going through hell and back. And especially when it is the villain, mm-hmm. this actually makes the villain a lot more vulnerable. At least on the surface, we we, we will know later on when the review keeps going. But I like I I no, I personally I like this concept a lot. The the whole thing about. She doesn't want to touch the food. She doesn't care. She's just letting herself to die. And mm-hmm. if you see the inside of the of the lair, ooh, that that screams. But the first thing that I thought was Batman Arkham Asylum. Yeah. With a queen, the the queen surrounded by the word princess, 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 princess all over, and she has knives and swords thrown against pictures of Twilight Sparkle. That she she even has. Dude, there is a poster of Twilight where she has ripped the eyes out. <laughs> wow. That is, that is, <laughs> you know, for kids. This well, is so cool. I like it. I like it. Oh, this is so Well, bad. Silver, so cool. it, it looks like your, well, it looks like your audience are not the only one who have been trouble with Twilight. <laughs> I guess not. I, uh, I do wonder who, who's the genius who told her Twilight was a princess now? <laughs> did, one of the, did one of the guards just slide open that door window and, and door slit and say, "Hey, by the way, Twilight Sparkle's a princess now." That is all. Not really, because she has to. Well, Twilight has to visit and do checkups on Chrysalis, so I think she might have discovered that herself. I got the. Well, I was getting the impression this is the first time they visited since the the uh, imprisonment started. No, uh, I'm. I, I didn't or, think so. Well, or the maybe, news. Or maybe someone just said, this is your diet as prescribed by Princess Twilight. <laughs> Princess what now? <laughs> yep, probably something like that. Well, you know, the news in Equestria, like the princesses, fly fast. <laughs> uh... So anyway, we learned that Rainbow Dash can learn history. <laughs> oh, yeah. Miss Testing Testing 1, 2, 3 actually can pay attention if it means the violent downfall of a society. Yeah, but also we have to mention that Rarity always brings her couch around. So, mm. <laughs> by the way, I love Spike's expression. He's like, "Where?" and Fluttershy, she's been around Pinky a lot. And Pinkie Pie is like, "What?" <laughs> I lo- I'm sorry, I oh. love Spike's face. It's crazy. Oh, by the way, if you take a look, see at the well. couch. If you take a look, see at the couch. There's a night guard, and oh my god, he is hating Rarity right now. Oh, she's just screeching the couch. Nails on a chalkboard, man. <laughs> or, or he's meant to just sort of be like, what? But I think that one, that look does look more contemptuous. But as Twilight doesn't, it doesn't know how to make stories interesting, so is the, is Rainbow Dash the one telling the story about the fall of Team Buck 2? <laughs> Which is the first, the first of the many ex- exploits that Queen Grizzlies has. And quite an interesting take, I might say, because this is the first time that we have seen Chrysalis without the holes on her legs or the, the, the overall buggy backbone kind of shape she has. The, the horn looks normal and all that. So this is probably the healthiest we have ever seen her be in forever. This may actually be the first time the changelings ever attacked. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was, this will be like their first, uh, their first attack on the city, and you can see them. You can see how they are drinking the ponies away. Like, look at that. That's that's actually kind of disturbing. The faces on those on those beggars, I look not just terrified. They look in pain. It looks they're like di- it hurts. They're dying. Yeah, yeah. It it uh, it doesn't get any better. Because on the next page, when uh, after Chrysalis takes the shape of the captain of the guards, apparently, after smashing his back against the size of a building so hard it cracks it up, she manages to uh, hide the rest, the uh, isolate what could be considered ro- the royalty of it. He has to drink them alive. Oh, well, that's a creepy image right there. Just the the, the, the dying expressions in their uh, in their jewel eyes. Yeah, their sunken cheeks, the their uh, the, the the backs under their eyes, all that. It, 
it does look terrifying. Terrifying and kind of like... Ugh. And it, I like the fact that this actually does have a purpose. It explains the origin story of her crown. The or- Yeah, why, why is she a queen? Well, because she just took down a king. And a theme for this whole comic is she loves to make fools of royalty. <laughs> yeah. She loves to do what she does. She's a monster and she's loving it. And then there's the legend that uh, King Orion fled into the sky. Kind of a jerk move on his part, but he was so embarrassed he became a star. Constellation. Was this based on a real or fictional story that's real or something like that? Well, the the legend of the Pegasus is, I think, is that he as he was dying, is it Pegasus that he was made into the star? But no, there's no constellation for Pegasus. I'm thinking of another hero. Mm. There is, a, there are legends of heroes who were dying that were instead spared and became constellations in the sky. Mm, okay. So, and, and it's just more that history loves to embellish. We take, we take the normal people, we take people who did extraordinary things, but we're still human beings, and we love to boost them up into an ideal. And sometimes it's equally shocking when we realize they're not uh, what we thought they were. For Rainbow, King Orion was this great hero and tragic figure. For Chrysalis, he was an idiot and lunch. <laughs> so true. <laughs> And then there's that drool on her uh, uh, mouth as she as she talks about it. The funny mm-hmm. thing is, the mouth is all we really see of Chrysalis, at least in current times, mm-hmm. for a majority of the comic. That's all we see of her. Yeah, and we don't even get to see her eyes. Like her eyes are her best features in the well, the series. Because take a look at those eyes. Like when she sucks the soul or the love out of those ponies, like. Oh my god, those eyes. <laughs> Wasn't this a reference to the original Gen 1, to an, an original Gen 1 uh, pony style? The ponies yes. with gems on their eyes? Oh god, you did, You think this is dark? You should hear the hardcore tale of how those things came about. What, the, the gem eye ponies? Yeah, it, uh. there's, a, there's a comic about it. If you hunt around online, I can probably find it. Uh, short story, very short. Applejack the G1 version, was very clumsy pony. Mm-hmm. And all the other ponies wanted to go, her to go away for a while because she was just making things worse. So she stumbled upon a wizard who had kept other ponies in enslavement. For so long, they'd gone blind. Oh, wow. All to mine magic gemstones. Applejack, through her own clumsiness, kicks him into a ravine that leads to the other side of the world. But let's face it, he's dead. <laughs> okay. Let's just be honest. And she breaks the stones... The shards fall into the eyes of the of the blinded ponies, and they gain these crystalline eyes that let that allow them to see. That is hardcore. I don't care if it's for little girls. That is freaking hardcore. And they say my little pony Gen One was for little girls. Hmm. Yeah. Right. It's, it's I actually got some pretty dark stuff going on in the background there. Don't ever. Don't ever piss off the pony named Majesty. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Speaking of crazy rulers, back to Chrysalis. Yes. Mm-hmm. That, uh, of course, there is a lot of um, poetry and mysticism added onto the stars. Twilight immediately dis- <laughs> disapproves of it. She doesn't agree with it at all. But hey, it adds to the mythos, I guess. Even Queen Chrysalis seems to like that. But it does have nothing to do with the the next uh, uh, the next debacle that. What was it? The, the sage, the siege on trot. <laughs> and I, I wasn't getting the pun until we reach to the next page and we see the, the, <laughs> we see the, 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 the false horse of Troy. So it's like, ah, trot, Troy, I get it. Oh, good grief. And it was not a thousand years ago. Thank goodness, says a Spike. Uh, Spike, I knew I liked you for a reason. <laughs> although, although I do find it funny that it's Chrysalis talking out of the uh, the king's flank. <laughs> the what now? Oh god, no! Well, because oh, yeah. the king is talking out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> you can know anything about it. The, that last panel, the last panel of page uh, tw- ten. That is, that is that is awesome. You can see the re- the many reflections of Chrysalis's face on the helmet. Oh yeah. Andy Price does a good job with this kind of 
detail. Like it's so minute that you don't really pay attention. But when you, you see, do, the, this is why I say that he's back in full form because, uh, like with the previous four comics that he has drawn, there were like one or two pages where he was pretty good, and then the rest were very meh. So far, every single page, every single page has had something that is visually striking and absolutely gorgeous, funny, referential, or interesting to look at. With the siege of uh, Trot, on the on the same page as we see the the great uh, Trot and horse, <laughs> there is bar none, the most effective guard in the history of Equestria. <laughs> uh, let me see, uh, your illustrious. Didn't we just defeat the Changeling army and their queen and banish them from the city, like, just the other day? You don't think this is a little weird? <laughs> uh... no, it, it is good to see that the the fall of this doesn't come from the fault of, um, the, the fall of Throat doesn't come from the fault of the, of the people <laughs> surveilling it and guarding it but the ones commanding it and ruling it it's all because of the rulers because the guy uh, is such a self-centered prick that he just cannot allow cannot allow to uh, uh, to pass a moment to uh, love himself I just love this guard this guard is my new favorite horse the emperor or the king whatever says bring it in and he's, he says you heard his majesty open the gates Go get a message to Celestia now. Yeah, that's why he's my favorite. He's effective. <laughs> he's working around this idiot. Oh, yes. And then there's common writer Chrysalis. <laughs> uh, giant bug arbors, I guess. Common writer Sanjo, except it's evil. Uh, <laughs> and, there are, and there were changelings within the populace as well, so this is more than a two-pronged, this is a two-pronged assault. And everything's going hunky dory until flaming hot Celestias comes in, and no, that's not the start of a slash pick. <laughs> Possibly one could be. Hmm. Although, I, in some ways, I feel a little bit bad for uh, Incinitus because, let's see, well, he look at the way he's being drained. I see. Oh, yes, think he's a fool. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> look at the no, no, no. Fool. Okay, whatever. That's not the point. Yeah. He's been drained the hell out of him. Look at that. I know, but we okay. Here, here's one thing: we 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 never got the we were never established of how the changeling feed. And is this comic rated twelve and above? No, no? PG. PG. Oh. This is this is a PG rating, like the PG rating of La Raiders of the Lost Ark, <laughs> me melting heads and 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 blood and all that, yeah, and ghosts and people getting exploded into bits. PG. Hmm. This is the same kind of PG rating. <laughs> this will be a PG. This will be a PG thirteen if they ever make a movie like this. And. <laughs> oh. You said the Sombra was PG thirteen, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a uh, twelve plus on the Comixology app. It ah. was rated twelve plus. And this is what? PG. Ten no, it's it's uh, all ages. Good lord! All ages, yeah. Sombra twelve plus. Queen Crystal is with blood. No, with love sucking, energy sucking powers. All ages. Oh dear! So the rating if... system is broken. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> but but that's how that and that's the story of how Chrysalis got her holes back. Oh wow! Well, I'm that that's one thing. But if you think about it even more, how did the other change thing got holes too? They got blasted to smithereens too. Hmm? Or maybe Chris was like, "If I gotta look like this, we're gonna have a code." Hmm. All you line up. Let me get my pin. <laughs> Ouch! And I guess because she's pure evil, she can't heal no matter what. Probably. I don't know. I mean, it's never established. We we don't have any established points. And then we get weird. There's one page where Rarity thinks that 8-bit from the Nay Anything arc is a change thing because he's bored by her fashion sense. And I, and I just like, why is this here? Why is Rarity telling a story about a date with, arguably, I'm glad to see 8-bit back. I like the Nay Anything arc. Mm -hmm. But what does this have to do with the story? Well, it's... How do I put this? 
it's one of the situations where you seen the face for that emperor, that ooh scary face, and we need to put in a, a bit of humor. And this is the humor, probably they were going for, maybe. I can't say it really made me laugh. It's so like rarity. Th- this is the one thing with with uh, I'm gonna say Katie Cook. She says Rarity's her favorite. She wrote the best uh, micro comic for mm-hmm, Rarity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but when Rarity's amongst other characters, she seems to become more of a cutout. Well, they're trying to do something, but I have to note one thing. Like if you take a look, see at Eight Bit and the his, his expression, his face at the wilting flower scene, the candles always gone. That is something different. I never seen Andy Price did this kind of art before. His pupils are shrinking, but his uh, are they called corneas? No, the whole expression, just... the whole the whole thing, like the whole art style, looks very different. I like it. This is something that you would see um, Tony Fleece or the others would do. Mm-hmm. By the way, first time that I noticed his kid mark is a space invader. <laughs> oh yeah, that's why he's called Eight Bit. Kind of, I can I just say it's kind of funny because oh, yeah. uh, twi- uh, because Queen Chrysalis she is a changeling akin to the body snatchers, mm-hmm. body snatchers aliens that is a space invader. <laughs> I want to take it as a, as a stealthy um, a pun that connects both stories, but it has no purpose in this comic. This will be a fault that I find in here. Reading it through the Comixology app, this was so confusing. For a moment, I thought that, I, that a page from another comic sneaked in. <laughs> well, I will I will credit Norman as a point that sometimes you need to throw in a little bit of absurdist humor just to lighten the mood. That was a pretty dark tale at the end. It started, well, with the Emperor, it started funny with his ego, but then you see what happens to him. But at the same time, I was like, couldn't... You have a little bit of funny banter with the ponies and that's that. Not take yeah. up a whole page. I do agree with you where if this was left out, it didn't really hurt anything. But I don't know. It, it's kind of humorous, probably. They wanted to... Uh, you know, I got no defense for this. Anyway, moving to the next page, we see <laughs> we see yeah. the punishment that Chrysalis got. The, talk about Talk about punishment... And talk about creepy imagery. Vanish to hell. Hellfire. <laughs> uh, fire I lake. Just... And the changelings are in the fire. You're already dead. You're in the hole. <laughs> they look like they are too close to the lava to even remain st- uh, f- full. They should be catching fire by this point. Well, at least Celestia's nice and not banishing them to the sun. You know, mate, I'm not sure anymore. Celestia's, maybe she mellowed out over the years. Twilight's a lot more forgiving. She just locked him in a, in a castle with an annoying, uh, body, uh, annoying guard. <laughs> so, this, this one, this scene, this whole imprisonment inside a volcano is pretty interesting. And, and when we see them, like, hear rumbles, we get to see them, well, face a dragon. And, this has always confused me. Why would Celestia imprison them where a dragon would well, have easy access? Well, I don't think Celestia counted on a dragon of this size. It was, obviously they were sealed in, and this dragon's just looking for a home. Mm. So this is just bad luck for Equestria, good-ish luck for Chrysalis. Yeah, and the dragon's name is Sergio. Hmm. Uh. Well, Sergio looks handsome, yes. And <laughs> I, I just love this scene where Chrysalis is playing to Sergio's ego, saying how awesome he is, how his fires are awesome and Sergio stuff. The, Sergio the dragon. <laughs> yeah. And, well, I, I think this is another cautionous tale about egos, was it? Pride. Pride, yes. Because... Being and, a, and a big shout-out to The Hobbit, by the way. Oh? oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. That's totally smog. <laughs> Who talks about the grandeur of his scales and his wings are mm. hurricane. 
and Chrysalis, it, yeah, nuts to, nuts to Frodo and Bilbo. Chrysalis would not only take the ring, but she'd, uh, do it right in front of Sauron after praising how, what pretty eye he has. <laughs> uh, but technically, um, Sergio says this, uh, hey, this is hot, ow, and then the whole, the whole of them, like, says, what, he was fine, probably. I mean, he's a dragon. He could withstand lava. So, yeah. You oh, are well, never sure entirely. <laughs> well, well it's, actually, it's, uh, it's not, it's not Sergio they're talking about, though. Oh? It's, this, this scene is fun because, uh, Chrysalis's underlings <laughs> get to, get to, like, offer incompetent <laughs> advice. <laughs> and, and so she's so fed up with this one captain who gave bad advice. She takes his helmet. It chucks him right into the lava and really? leaves him. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't see that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Really? What it? Because not not really. She, uh, oh. Look, she's making a throwing motion. There are speed lines. Oh, 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 wow. oh, oh. oh wow. I was confused. Oh. I was confused with this scene at first. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a moment of revelation brought to you on the NBS show. Chrysalis oh. just chucked one of her own into a po- into ah. a lava. You have, oh my god, that no, is okay. now now that makes sense when looking at the ponies' <laughs> faces. Dark is this comic very dark? Holy cow! Well, I this take is, it, this is I, why you don't piss off the queen. I take it back when I say that Diamond Tiara... She's not pulling any punches! <laughs> wow! I, t- I take it back when I say that Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon were the ultimate villains of MLP. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon would just say mean things to um, someone who is uh, disabled. <laughs> Queen Crystal would kill your own men. Like, oh, wow. Okay! And the load. Not to mess around. Anyone who would pick it up? Well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do from the, the, the terrifying. Okay, okay. Oh, let's go. Oh, you want to get? We're not at the terrifying part yet. We've got no. to get to the origin of Christmas. Oh yeah. Oh yes, yeah. Ever, no, that's that is awesome. I mean, part of me wanted. To, I'll be honest. Going into this, part of me wanted to tie everything together. That we had Princess Amore broken and scattered across Equestria from the Sombra comic. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, what would happen if those shards came together in the wrong way? Ah. What if Amore herself was corrupted, she pulled her form together, but none of the love was there, and gave birth to Chrysalis instead? Mm. But that's obviously not what happened, but that doesn't make this any less interesting. So, but before then, we've got probably the most contested part of this comic. Oh. Twilight gets duped. Bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when when I when I wanted to say earlier on with how the changelings feed, this is one theory I had because Chrysalis wanted to wanted Rainbow Dash's book, and well, ov- obvious reason is she's in a prison for a thousand years, so why not read something right? So this originally in my head, the way that. Changing feet was of love and emotions. So when she wanted the book because Rainbow Dash had a lot of good times with the book, had a lot of sentimental value. So with this, the Changeling Queen had something in her system and fed out of the emotional values, sorry, out of the sentimental values that were in the book and could, you know, do something about it. Uh, but that's my theory. That's why I thought she wanted the book for. Okay, but we were both wrong. Mm. And this is where people uh, people get upset because this is, like you say, we were coming off a two, two, two arc pieces where Twilight was not the sharpest bulb. Mm-hmm. There's a brightest bulb in the chicken pen, counting them before they were hatched. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so people are saying, oh, Twilight's get walked right into that. She's so stupid. Why does Katie, why does Katie Cook hate Twilight so much? And yeah, so on and so forth. But to be honest, when when the whole situation here is, um, they were they, they were two sides of the coin. Flashdash is against it. Rainbow Dash is too. And well, 
Applejack is for it, and we we have we have a lot of banter in between them before they open the door. So it's not that it's kind of how do I put this? It's not that Twilight didn't had points of view of the matter. It's just that she chose wrong. She chose wrong, but the thing that makes this different. Because Applejack was telling Twilight, use magic on the bulls in uh, in the, mm-hmm. the Bad and the Ponies. But Twilight refused to listen. Why that sounded dumb is that she was making that choice in in spite of everything she saw around her. Mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. it was it conflicted so much with what the events unfolding. I thought, no, this is not Twilight Sparkle. She would not allow this to happen. Here, Chrysalis has created this image of a deteriorating shell of a being. The mm-hmm. Twilight foot in confinement. And the these three stories all demonstrate that she is a master manipulator who knows how to turn your strength against you. Mm-hmm. It doesn't she's she's a survivor. Exactly. And yeah. so when she well, she quotation marks tricks Twilight, one, they probably only glimpsed that Rainbow Dash had a book. Uh so that I guess is a little fortuitous. But they took advantage of the situation right away and managed to trick Twilight into coming in, playing to her sympathy, presenting themselves as not a threat, lulling her into a false sense of security, and maybe a little bit of her own uh, pride. Let yesterday's reader, tomorrow's leader. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, well, you got you got you got misled by the queen. I guess that she makes she led you on. Yeah, true that. And poor guard for this to retirement. <sighs> Well, as far as I know, he made it. Yeah. Well, you you do have to uh, you do have to take one thing into consideration. How many of you were tricked by this as well? Oh, how I... many of you believe this? Because I bought it. I totally bought it. I totally believe that Chrysalis was letting herself to die because, for all we know, changelings can only be fed with love. They cannot eat anything else. Yeah, so see. seeing her frail, fragile, and weak. You totally fall for it. Besides, for a villain, she's a very beloved character in this fandom. Yeah. Everybody has drawn fan art of Queen Chrysalis. Everybody. It doesn't matter what they say. They have. They all have drawn Queen Chrysalis at one point or another. Equestria Daily had two draw friends, one after the other, <laughs> focused on Queen Chrysalis. And it is obvious that they are not going to do anything with her in the show because they are giving her so much development in the comics. Um, I, will, I will explain to you why I think this is happening. So... It does make a lot of sense to me that they want to have Queen Chrysalis as a recurring villain for Twilight Sparkle to defeat. She is the Moriarty to Twilight. Remember what I said earlier on about this comic? That I, I said that I felt sympathy for Queen Chrysalis with how she looks, like how she acted, like the poor girl is not eating right. And on page... 20. Oh, what a twist. But that is that is her power. That is actually what makes her such a wonderful villain. You don't see her coming and then you kind of want to kick yourself because how could I not see that? She completely fooled me. This is the part that I that I actually we we think I think we can gush about for a good couple of days. Uh, uh, but uh, for the sake of the review we better make it fast. However, this is what storytelling, visual storytelling is all about. How they tell you the origin of the changelings with basically no dialogue at all. Just only focused on the creepy imagery. And it's not just creepy, it's so well done. I, I want to give, I want to give Silver the floor here because I think he is going to word it much better than I ever could. Oh. And I actually want to hear what you have to say about it. Alright, well let's, let's just go through, uh, the Chrysalis origin bit by bit. It starts with a, an acorn. A very foul acorn. Just, and you're right, Andy Price, his heavy use of, well, not efficient use of shadow. He adds, even without, even if you took all the color away, the texture of this malformed, putrid acorn is so well portrayed. The, the colors and the lighting enhance it, but the line art sells it. It lands in a pool of putridness and grows into one of the most grotesque trees that, with a nice little The Fly reference, actually devours insects. Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! And then, in, and because... Oh, sorry. 
Wait, by the way, flies that we see at the beginning of the comic. <laughs> they are all over the title and all over the first page of the comic. And inspiration for Chrysalis's inexplicable battle armor. Uh, but yeah. we're, but we're still not quite in nightmare territory yet. So this tree's roots gather up the bones of ponies, specifically a, at least one unicorn that was in there. So whoever that unicorn is and however he or she died, they were the archetype of the changelings. And in comes Star Swirl the Bearded, because nothing in the past can happen without Star Swirl the Bearded. <laughs> and he sets up shop, gets stung or bitten by the insects, which uh, I'm going to assume that he didn't manage to swat it away, that it instead f- flew too near the tree and got devoured itself. In the one line of dialogue, Star Swirl says that he doesn't like the feel of this place and nails a sign warning everyone to not approach. So a combination of natural putridness, the magic of one of the most powerful unicorns in history, the bones of an unknown and lost soul, all come together to birth not only the changeling race, but Queen Chrysalis in the creepiest image to the comic is her yep. eyes and fangs, no mouth, fangs. And we as human beings, but also as animals, we recognize the danger of fangs. It, it's instinctive. When something bears its teeth and they're sharp, you know what it intends. And even at a little age, you know it's scary. We were talking about the Canterlot Wedding uh, episodes at the beginning of... Uh, b- before the, we were doing the review and how flawed they were and how bad the, 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 the first one is and how good is the second compared to the first one. One of the reasons... No, okay, hang on. The reason why the second episode is so good is because the reveal of Queen Chrysalis is just so well done. Indeed. Where you see her turning from what used to be Cadence into the actual queen. And is that dark silhouette and those big, buggy, greenish eyes with that crooked smile with those fangs appear on them. I have never seen something as creepy as that until that reveal. That reveal in the comic, that last panel on page 23, is is worth everything. That is so good. You can even see the hair flowing from outside of the, the, the hole in the tree. And now some people, I, a lot of the comments I read on like Equestria Daily and on DeviantArt, some people are upset that Chrysalis is pure evil. That she... Uh, has no greater depth to her character. And it's kind of funny because uh, James and I, we talked at length about Sombra, whether he was the product of his environment or if he was always destined just to be that way. And I think that's part of the appeal of Sombra's character. You can have that debate. He is a cautionary tale. He is a reflection of the, the most negative outcome. Chrysalis is not a cautionary tale in that you could end up like this. But she is an absolute force that pushes the heroes and heroines to their limits. She came closer to winning than anyone. Mm -hmm. Even even arguably Mm T-Rick. Because it's more that she just dropped her guard that she lost. Uh, So I don't mind that she is the product, maybe even an inevitable outcome of a magical world. You get just the right conditions together for everything to go wrong. But that she's a force that will always push Twilight to her limits, and I enjoy her character for that aspect. Just looking at Grizzlis herself, like her design is scary. Like she was meant to be scary in a kid's show. Like who does that? No, but no, there is there, there is levels of um uh, to <laughs> there is levels to how you experience fear. And the comic starts rather creepy, but no, by the time that they are telling you the story of how Queen Chrysalis and her changelings came to be, this is just downright terrifying. This is something that you'd expect to see, oh, I'm not even sure, in a Ralph Bas- Basque <laughs> uh, production of Lord, Lord of the Rings. This is downright terrifying. This is, this is really good. Yeah, this is yeah. Andy Price at full force. This is the Andy Price that we've been missing in uh, in all the previous issues. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like 
lightning struck and the inspiration just hit him right in the head and we got that. Oh, by the way, we are forgetting something. The colors of Heather Breckel are gorgeous. Like, it's, it's, it's amazing how can she keep it dark while also keeping it colorful. The thing that DC and Warner Bros. cannot do for their comic book adaptations, where for them, darker is darker. You cannot have hues of color in the darkness of the DC movies. Heather Brackley is able to pull it off without even losing her, losing her mind. This is, re- this is really amazing. We always said that Heather's colors were always awesome, no matter what issue of the books she colors for. So she does even good job. Well, since we like this issue, we see that it's even more awesomer. And we, how can we not mention that flirtatious face that Chrysalis give when she talks to Twilight? And Twilight trying to use her magic, but nope, denied. No, no, okay, okay. Let's talk about this last page. Because the, 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 this is where you start to feel the needlessness of the rarity, uh, the, that rarity excerpt page. You feel it right there in the ending. Mm-hmm. Because I am so happy that they paced the, re- the, the, the birth of the changelings so well through three pages with basically no dialogue whatsoever. But the conclusion, I love the conclusion. I love the idea of the conclusion. It's great. To have the changelings and chrysalis escape, run away, to probably have more adventures to, to, to bring to the main six. That's brilliant. I absolutely love it. But it happens way too fast, way too quick, and there is not enough pacing for it. The conclusion is rushed beyond all repair. It's very badly paced. Mm, true that, true that. I mean, the end here, from if we do not include the backstory for how Chrysalis was born, it does say, well, this battle's too quick. We switch to... Them, well, we switched to Chrysalis saying, there's no story. I was born this way. And Twilight trying to fight back, push, yeah. Chrysalis push Twilight to a door, and zoom out. We, we, we don't really know how. Well, apparently she's still, it, it could be she drained a little strength from Twilight. Twilight looks pretty beaten up. Maybe not enough time for a full love drain, but enough to give her a little boost. I do love that the changelings are so considerate. They took all the furniture and the bed because, you know, they've got to relocate. A little feng shui. There's probably not equestrian Ikea. <laughs> yeah, probably. And then well, a, I guess a, it... a reprieve of this day has just been just perfect. <laughs> well, I guess it doesn't really matter when, um, no matter how powerful you are of a, of a unicorn like Twilight is, it doesn't matter how powerful you are. When you get slammed against the door with ho- both hoofs strangling your neck, I guess that will cause anyone to uh, lose control of their magic. Mm. Uh, true, true. I, personally, I I love that the... Okay, I don't care how mean I sound here. I love that the main six lose. Well, they deserve I to love, lose. I love that they lose. I love that they get defeated. We were getting, we, we are, we are starting to get Power Rangers syndrome right here, guys, mm. where it, it's coming to the point of, uh, oh, bad guy appears, uh, uh, summon the powers, the powers, oh, it's not enough, summon the giant megasaur, oh, we're gonna defeat him, ha, ah, Angel Grove is safe again. <laughs> the, I, I was, I was burned out by the time that, uh, I watched the American Power Rangers, by the way, and yeah, I know that it was a splice from a, Super Sentai show. And of course, they were giving them victories constantly because American kids cannot cope with defeat. Ah, it doesn't matter if we had an entire TV show dedicated to the concept of winning versus losing. Batman, the animated series. <laughs> but I love the fact that they actually do lose in this comic. They get their asses handed to themselves. Chrysalis runs away, gets away with it. She leaves, leaving them there in the dust. And I love that. Well, like I said, they deserve to lose because of their hubris. Take them down a notch. Teach them some humility. Make them flawed. Something that they haven't done and that has been a constant issue of debate since uh, Queen, since uh, Princess Twilight Sparkle appeared in the stage. That it is always about winning. It's always about the victory. That you're never going to lose because you're in a position of power. 
falls, 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 falls. Sooner or later, you're going to fall. Sooner or later, you're going to make a mistake. And I'm so glad that they did it this way. If only they dedicated it a couple more pages than just one. Yeah, but well, we were the, given this. And you have to deal with the pissed off Fluttershy. Well, there's... Oh, that was glorious. I was so happy to see that as well. All hail the Fluttershy. Who wants to tell Princess Celestia about this? <laughs> Not it. And this is going to motivate Twilight. She's going to internalize this so much that this is whatever the changelings do will be her fault. Partially Ooh. true, but at least in her eyes, I think. So oh. whenever whenever they bring Chrysalis back into the comics, Twilight will be the one most eager to go on a changeling hunt. Oh, in fact, yeah. In fact, that might be a good character arc for her. She's so fixated on undoing her mistakes, she starts accusing the wrong ponies. Well, that would be awesome if it was an episode, but if we're doing a comic thingy, it's all going to be structured. Probably we'll get an awesome faux parter, so yay. There you go. Oh, goodness, but we have finally reached the end of the Fiendship is Magic line. Indeed. Yeah, holy cow, this is the end. That was that was an intense month of April, I might say. Yep. And yeah. oh, hang on a minute! Did, did we reach? Did we do the final conclusions for the Queen Chrysalis one? Not we haven't. yet. Not yet. We haven't. We should. We should. We should. Okay, guys. <laughs> final conclusions. Final thoughts on the Queen Chrysalis comic. What did you think? In Barthed alphabetical order, as always. So, Silver, you go first. We've had villains that were sympathetic. We've had villains that were uh, had seemingly some justification to their motives, or just felt their emotions. I'm fine with one villain who is just pure evil and is a threat. And once, and now that she's loose, Equestria is a little bit more unsure of its future. That's fine by me because that makes for great storytelling. And this is Queen Chrysalis being awesome. No idiot stick, no last minute deus ex love wave. <laughs> it's just her showing why she's a threat. Talking to you guys, re reviewing this comic, rereading it, I have to bump it up. This is either tied to Sombra or my number one. <laughs> uh, but no, the the story here it tells it's it's a really interesting read. Her villainous ways are just so precious that it's. Mm, how do I even describe this? I just love everything about it. Andy Price, Katie Cook, they jumped back right into the saddle and gave us this awesome issue. Like, uh, it's just so good. It's just so good. I am really happy to have this comic. Very happy that it exists. Coming from Katie Cook and Andy Price, who, who, who we three have been... Anything but harsh for the past few weeks. Uh, not that it wasn't granted. I mean, the comics that, the latest comics that they have been working on were anything but, uh, but good. So, being able to talk about something that they work together and to talk about it positively and say genuinely optimist about this, it feels wonderful because I love this duo and I knew that they could do better than what they were putting together. And this proves it. This is a really good comic. It is, um, it's interesting, visually beautiful, gorgeous to look at, and it, it, it has, it's so, it's very macabre. It's, it's very messed up, but there is a beauty to its, uh, uh, how will you put it? There is a beauty to how grim it is. Where it is not green dark, oh my god, too edgy for me. But it does, it takes it far enough that you get into it, but it doesn't kick you out of the experience. It is, it is great. It's not without its flaws, of course. The, the conclusion grew up in a bit faster, and we didn't need that except with gravity in it. But I think it's a great comic, and I cannot, I cannot stop reading it. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. And, well, I, right. I think I think we yeah, reached well, the point where we have to list down our favorites because I don't think so. There's going to be an issue six here. No, nope. I, I I doubt it. I mean, hopefully this one will open the these comics will open the door to more pillar inter, in, interactions. Like, who knows if King Sombra is going to come back? And oh god, I hope we see more of Queen Chrysalis in the future. I, I really hope so. But if it opens the door to more, that will be great. 
I doubt it will open the door to more Finch Beast Magic comics. Mm -hmm. uh, because they actually wanted to make it a six-parter. Oh. They, they wanted to do one with Discord. <laughs> but Hasbro said, no, no, guys, you cannot do Discord. We will take care of that in the TV show. All right. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, so shall we shall we list our favorites or yes, just sort of please. break them up? Let's let's list our favorites. And you know what? I am predicting it. We are all going to list them in the exact same way. Who knows? Let, variety is the spice of life. But let's see. <laughs> Although I will say that starting off, this has been the if you mapped out my reaction to the comics, it forms almost a perfect bowl. We start at a high point, got a little low, hit the low point, somewhat still disappointed but came back and then ended on a high note. So my order is uh, King Sombra, Queen Chrysalis, T-Rex, Nightmare Moon, and at the bottom, the Sirens. Like, I have to agree with Silver. The, the bowl reference, as in Graph, is true. I, I had the same thing too, where started off good, petered out, dropped, raise a bit, and then ended in a high. So my list would be, well, this might surprise you guys, but Queen Chrysalis, Sombra, T-Rex, Nightmare Moon, and Siren. Oh, you traitor! <laughs> I did tell you that our review opened my eye that this Queen Chrysalis arc is awesome. Like, okay, Sombra, I'm not saying that Sombra was bad. We had an hour and a half discussion about Sombra. That has to be good. But there's so many unconfirmed things. And there's so many, like we said, like he had so many options to pick. Like he could have been good. The people of the town could have been good to him. Then he wouldn't be evil, blah, blah, blah. But with this, nope. She's just evil. There's no, there's no yes, no, left, right, up, down. She is just pure evil. Why did she do it? Because she can. <laughs> and what about you, James? Uh, well, I am going to follow. I, I am actually going to have the exact same order as uh, Silver does, actually. It's, uh, King Sombra will be my number one, followed by Queen Chrysalis, then Tyrek, then Nightmare Moon, and finally the Sirens. Uh, that is, there is a reason why I'm putting them in, the, in that order. I mean, needless to say, the Sirens, mediocre. Uh, mm -hmm. Nightmare Moon, wasted potential. T-Rex, some good ideas. Some of them were fairly well developed. The others one were... Uh, Queen Crystal is great, great, awesome comic. Absolutely brilliant. I love the, the, the concept of the whole thing, but it's, it's what I am expecting from Andy Price and Katie Cook at this point. It's like, this is her return to form from them. Brilliant. Well done. I am expecting this, the King Sombra one, now that was a surprise, because this is from the person who drew the Pinkie Pie and Twilight uh, Friends Forever, and I keep going back to that one, but if you see how zany and insane and crazy and colorful that one is, when you compare it with how dark the King Sombra one is, I just love the people that are able to make something that is completely opposed to what they were doing before. Like, you know the guys who did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? Yeah. They also did the Lego movie. What? Really? You know, you know what else did they do? What? 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street. <laughs> okay. Who are some of the most rated R comedies you have seen in your life. Full of very out of place, very adult jokes. And they are able to make such an innocent, fun loving movie as the Lego movie. They are capable of going from one to the other. Brenda Hickey is able to do that. I know that now, and I admire that. I love people who are able to do something like that. So that's why the King Sombra one is in my number one position. Like, from an artistic point of view, not just for the thematic, which is unbelievably rich, but from the artistic point of view, is a fantastic uh, change of uh, tone uh, for what she's gotten us used to. She also did the artwork for the Applejack and Major Mare uh, Friends Forever. Hmm. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there you go. Sorry, we're in a bit of a rant. <laughs> no problem. No <laughs> I problem. apologize. Well, at, at least we had a variety because well, I give you my point and reasoning for why I like the Chrysalis arc even more. But hey, it's it's up there. It's in the top two. But still, not saying that Sombra is bad, but 
after this review, I just had to change because uh, that that what sold me was when he threw when when Chrysalis threw her own own changeling into the lava. That that sold me. <laughs> Pony violence and meanness sells sells Norman Sanso. Hey, come on. We're More talking about villains. Eleven. We're talking about villains here. And that was a villainous thing to do. Very villainous. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Super. But anyway, James, what's next on our plate <laughs> of reviewing? A nap. Because I don't know if you... You know what? I am going to break the illusion right now, and I'm going to say it right away. Guys, all of these reviews that you have seen, they all have been recorded within the same day. We have been in a call for five hours and almost 20 minutes, non-stop talking about the Finship is Magic comic books. I am so tired. <laughs> yes, so well, it's time to pat ourselves on the back, and I believe an episode review is... Uh, in order? In order. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. In which case, I ask you guys, will you want to um, review a couple of episodes... So we can uh, catch up and get up to date with the with the, the the series reviews, or would you want to do episode review and then comic review? Uh, well, I say that since we gave the good audience a back to back comic review, I say we give them a back to back episode review. What do you think, Silva? Yeah, we're, we're we've almost exhausted the current uh, collection of comics now. Mm-hmm. I think there's just one or two friends forever left in the pipe, and then we've got to wait. Funny enough, as at the time of recording this, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are slated to be the next uh, Friendship Friends Forever comic. So I yeah, guess they little, haven't been out yet. I guess a little bit of the fiendship is carrying over. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and judging by previews of the main series, this might be Diamond Tiara month. Wow, wow. So in that case, we can slow down on the comic reviews because, like you say, we only have like issues 14 and 15 of the Friends Forever left to review, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, That's and, now, and yes. of the and of the main series, we have the 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 wrestling one that will oh. be issue number uh, 29. Was it? Yes, yes, yes. Oh God, can't wait because I know of, I know a listener who is waiting for us to review that. <laughs> All righty. Oh. So, okay, yeah, I vote for episode review. So, so we will be reviewing, uh, which one was it? Hang on a minute. Let me grab the wiki. Oh my god, this is all over the place. Ah, my tablet is almost falling. Um, <laughs> no. I, the wiki. I, think, I think we'd be looking at Appaloosa's most, most wanted. Yep, Appaloosa's most wanted. And... True. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, by the time that we are recording, uh, that we will be recording, we will be reviewing Appaloosa, Appal, Appal, Appaloosa's Most Wanted, which is episode six of season five, written by Dave Polsky, and Make New Friends But Keep Discord, which is episode seven of season five, written by Natasha Levinger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my god. I cannot believe we're actually running out of material. What the hell? How did we do this? Uh, because, because you people put on five-hour phone calls <laughs> where we talk about five issues all together. Oh, <laughs> God, I'm hearing more voices than usual. <laughs> oh, I am man. actually, you know what? I never thought it would be exhausted of talking, but I am exhausted of talking. <laughs> I, just want, I just want to... Go back, like, hang up the call, go to dinner, and then come back. Put on Big Hero Six, which is waiting for me here on the on my desk because I I haven't even taken it out of the the ink wrap. wrap. It's still wrapped <laughs> up, and I want to watch it while. Well, I want to have it as background noise while I work on more uh Art. more comics. Yes. Uh, alrighty then. So anyway, James, with that, take us out. Oh, uh, ooh, do you want to? Do you want me to take you out for dinner, Norman? I even hungry, knew that sure. you were in that kind of thing. Sure. <laughs> I am hungry right now, so let's well, go. Shipping begins. Yay. And let the shipping begin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this crazy series of reviews. We will be seeing you on the next one. Thank you so much for listening to us. This has been James Cork. I am tired, Norman Sanzo. And I am still wondering about that green goo. Oh, God, no. 
<laughs> well, you see, when a pony and a hoof love each other very much. Anyway, goodbye. <laughs> and, they, and they live next to a radioactive plant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And talk about the clopping. <laughs> oh, God. We're not going to mention about that song. No, 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 no. Uh, and you put it in your mouth. And you put it in your mouth. And stuff it in your face. And you stuff it in your face. Uh. <laughs>